My name is Gary Zaloga, and today I will be discussing advances in lipid emulsions, emergence of quinolipid. This is part one of a three-part series. In part one, I will discuss biological functions and nomenclature for fatty acids. In part two, I will discuss immune effects of fatty acids. And in part three, I will discuss clinical results and implications of using an olive oil-based lipid emulsion. I would like to point out two potential conflicts of interest. I was a previous employee of Baxter Healthcare between 2006 and 2016. I am currently a consultant for Baxter Healthcare. Why are lipids important? Lipids are the primary source of energy for the human body. Glucose stores are limited, and so the body must store its energy as lipid or fat. Lipid is energy dense, supplying 9 kcals per gram, compared with carbohydrate, which supplies 4 kilocalories per gram. Lipid provides essential fatty acids and is the primary structural component of cellular membranes. Lipids transport many essential cellular substances in the form of chylomicrons and lipoproteins. Examples include vitamins A, D, E, and K. Lipids directly and indirectly regulate gene transcription and are precursors for numerous cellular messengers. Lipids are precursors for immune and inflammatory modulators, which include prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and thromboxanes. Lipids are also precursors of cholesterol and steroidal compounds. Bioenergy is an important coupler between metabolism and cellular functions. Energy is required for inflammation and immunity. The pro-inflammatory phase is based upon use of glucose as the primary energy source. In contrast, the adaptive phase involved in healing and recovery uses fatty acids as the primary energy source. Fatty acids are classified using a variety of nomenclatures. Fatty acids may be classified by chain length into short, containing 2 to 4 carbons, medium, containing 6 to 12 carbons, and long chain fatty acids, containing 14 or more carbons. Most fatty acids in lipid emulsions are long chain fatty acids. Fatty acids can also be classified by the number of double bonds into saturated, containing no double bonds, monounsaturated containing one double bond or polyunsaturated fatty acids containing two or more double bonds. In addition, fatty acids are classified by the position of the first double bond from the omega or N terminal of the molecule. N3, N6, and N9 indicate that the first double bond is on the third, sixth, or ninth carbon from the end terminal. On this slide are listed various fatty acids and their designations. Oleic acid has 18 carbons, one double bond, and the double bond is on the ninth carbon from the end terminal. Oleic acid is designated a C181N9 fatty acid. Linoleic acid has 18 carbons, two double bonds, and the first double bond is on the sixth carbon from the end terminal. Linoleic acid is designated a C182N6 fatty acid. Besides fatty acids, lipids also include phospholipids, the primary fatty acids contained in cell membranes, Mono, di, and triglycerides. Triglycerides are the primary fatty acid molecules of lipid emulsions, 
and the fat tissue, and cholesterol and steroids. Double bonds in the fatty acid chain cause a bend in the fatty acid molecule. Saturated fatty acids, such as stearic acid, are straight chains. Oleic acid with one double bond has a slight bend. Linoleic acid containing two double bonds, arachidonic acid containing four double bonds, and docosahexanoic acid, or DHA, containing six double bonds, have additional bends, which cause the molecule to bend back upon itself and form circles. The structural characteristics of the fatty acids are extremely important because they affect membrane fluidity and localization and function of membrane proteins, such as ion channels, receptors, transporters, and signaling molecules. Changes in membrane structure and function are believed to be responsible for many of the biological effects of fatty acids and for the differences between fatty acids of different classes. In conclusion, fatty acids are essential energy sources for the body. Fatty acids have many other important biological functions within the human body that include modulation of inflammation and cellular immunity. Fatty acids have different three-dimensional structures which regulate the functions of numerous proteins within the cell membranes. In part two, we will discuss the immune effects of fatty acids. Clinolipid injection is indicated in adults for providing a source of calories and essential fatty acids for parenteral nutrition when oral or enteral nutrition is not possible, insufficient, or contraindicated. Limitations. Clinolipid injection is not indicated for use in pediatric patients because there is insufficient data to demonstrate that clinolipid injection provides sufficient amounts of essential fatty acids in this population. The omega-3, omega-6 fatty acid ratio in clinolipid injection has not been shown to improve clinical outcomes compared to other intravenous lipid emulsions. Warning. Deaths in premature infants after infusion of intravenous lipid emulsions have been reported in the medical literature. Autopsy findings included intravascular fat accumulation in the lungs. Preterm infants and low birth weight infants have poor clearance of intravenous lipid emulsion and increased free fatty acid plasma levels following lipid emulsion infusion. The use of clinolipid injection is contraindicated in patients with the following. 1. Known hypersensitivity to egg or soybean proteins, the lipid emulsion, and or excipients. 2. Severe hyperlipidemia or severe disorders of lipid metabolism. The following are important risk information regarding the use of clinolipid. Stop infusion immediately and treat patient accordingly if signs or symptoms of a hypersensitivity or allergic reaction develop. Monitor for signs and symptoms of fat overload, essential fatty acid deficiency, and infections, including laboratory test results such as leukocytosis and hyperglycemia, and frequent checks of the parenteral access device. Carefully monitor severely undernourished patients and slowly increase their nutrient intakes while avoiding overfeeding to prevent refeeding complications. Frequent clinical and laboratory determinations are necessary throughout treatment. Monitor fluid status closely in patients with pulmonary edema or heart failure. Content of vitamin K may counteract anticoagulant activity. Clinolipid injection contains no more than 25 micrograms per liter of aluminum. There is an increased aluminum toxicity risk in patients with impaired kidney function, including preterm infants. Parenteral nutrition-associated liver disease 
has been reported in patients who receive parental nutrition for extended periods of time, especially preterm infants. Monitor liver function tests. If patients develop liver test abnormalities, consider discontinuation or dose reduction. Reduce doses of clinolipid injection and monitor serum triglyceride levels in patients with serum triglyceride concentrations above 400 milligrams per deciliter. The most common adverse drug reactions reported during clinolipid injection clinical trials were nausea and vomiting, hyperlipidemia, hyperglycemia, hypoproteinemia, and abnormal liver function tests.